Unlike Fallout 3 and 4, Fallout New Vegas has a reputation system that keeps track of how the factions like the NCR, Legion, and Great Cons feel about your character. Most people pick a faction to side with and do whatever is necessary to keep them happy. But what if them being happy wasn't enough? What if you wanted every faction to worship you like a god? Can you beat Fallout New Vegas while being idolized by everyone? There are more than a dozen factions in Fallout New Vegas, but only 11 of those matter for this challenge. Only 11 appear within the Reputation tab in your Pip-Boy. Each faction in this list has a range of emotions they can feel towards your character, all dependent on how you've acted towards them as a people, how you've treated the individuals in that community, have you stolen anything, have you helped those in need, have you eaten any dead people in broad daylight? Do good, and you're awarded with fame. Earn enough fame with a faction and they'll like you. Then they'll accept you. Push through the love stage, into worshipping territory and you'll become idolized. The amount of fame required to be idolized varies from faction to faction, but becoming a respected member of a community is not enough. On top of needing to amass positive reputation points with each faction, I have to not do anything to piss them off. Each faction will tolerate some amount of reckless behavior before they start letting the insults fly. Any amount of negative reputation points, infamy, is a death sentence. Killing a member of a faction and being caught for it is 30 infamy. Getting caught stealing is 2 infamy. Knowing anyone in the world sees me as anything less than perfect, my heart couldn't take it. You can't undo infamy. Those points don't go away. If you're idolized by Good Springs and get caught stealing a potato, the townspeople will never look at you the same way. You'll be a good-natured rascal forever. With that in mind, let's meet the factions. The Boomers require 50 positive reputation points, fame, to be idolized by them. The Brotherhood of Steel need 20 points. Caesar's Legion needs 100 points to be idolized. The Followers of the Apocalypse need 50 points. Freeside needs 70 points. Good Springs needs 15 points. The Great Cons need 30 points. The New California Republic requires 80 points. Novak needs 15 points. The Powder Gangers need 30 points. The Strip needs 40 points. Lastly, the White Gloves, the White Unholy Mittens themselves, need a heart-stopping 10 points to become idolized. As for special stats and, you know, the rest of the game, I went with a maxed out intellect for skill points, 9 in luck for critical shots and good fortune when gambling. Spread out the rest, picked Speech, Guns, and Lockpick as my skills, Skilled and Wild Wasteland as my traits, and introduced the Wasteland to its new best friend. Everything is up for grabs in this playthrough. Any exploits can be used. The only thing I can't do is use console commands. I began with Chet, as one does in a normal playthrough, and let the bullshit out of the pen by utilizing the first of many tricks I have stuffed up my sleeve. Dynamite is a special explosive. If you drop a stick on the ground, you can blow it up by shooting it, and if that dynamite happens to kill someone, the game has nobody to blame because the dynamite's gone, so your reputation suffers no consequences. A couple downsides, dynamite doesn't play well with quicksaves. If I drop a couple sticks on the ground to take out a few guys, quicksave and the explosion doesn't kill them, reloading the quicksave eats my dynamite. Every time. Another downside to this exploit in general is that the explosion needs to kill everyone it touches. If an NPC takes damage, they'll know you did it and that gives you infamy. Good Springs is the first town to feel my loving wrath. Not a lot to this town. Do the tutorial quest with Sunny Smiles for 4 points. Cheyenne dying to a rogue Colonel Autumn didn't harm me at all. Fix Trudy's radio for 2 more points, and a fork in the road appears. The Powder Gangers and Good Springs are locked in a cold war, and Ringo's gonna be the deciding factor. You can't complete Ghost Town Gunfight and run Good Springs Run in the same playthrough. Ringo lives in one quest and dies in the other. Can't be idolized by Good Springs if Ringo dies. Can't be idolized by the Powder Gangers if he lives. So, that's it. You can't beat Fallout New Vegas while being idolized by everyone. But we can all agree that not every faction is as important as the others. Good Springs, God bless them, they just don't matter. They live isolated lives. Nobody in Good Springs, outside of Victor who splits the second you wake up, matters in any quest outside of the quests I've already mentioned. The Powder Gangers are involved with the NCR. Siding with them gets me more benefits than siding with Good Springs. To be as shallow and pedantic about this as possible, I used the dynamite method to dispose of Ringo and lined up Joe Cobb and his boys for my home run swing. By talking to Cobb and telling him I'd shake down the townsfolk for supplies in the upcoming war for Good Springs, but killing Cobb and his family before beginning the shakedown, the quest has nowhere to go. You can hit the skill check over and over again. Each time, it rewards you with 30 XP, 39mm ammo, a suit of leather armor, and powder ganger fame, making them the first group I became idolized by. 
I spammed the enter button for a long time. I didn't have an exact level in mind to stop at. I just went on and on until I felt I had high enough skills to conquer the wasteland. Speech at 100 lets me talk my way out of a dry paper bag, and all my other skills being above 50 ensures there are only a handful of skill checks throughout New Vegas I cannot pass. And with that, at level 30 f***ing 2, I left town to begin my quest of making 9 other factions worship me. Pretty much every faction's major quest line will have to be completed at some point in the future. The order isn't too important. I went south, towards Mojave Outpost to aid the NCR. Ranger Ghost and Ranger Jackson have two easy quests to complete. Murder a family of insects for Jackson, and check in on Nipton for Ghost and you've got yourself 6 out of 80 points needed for the NCR. While I was in Nipton, I played with Bulpus. He's one of Caesar's most trusted allies, a future quest giver, and a furry. Surely killing him will not come back to bite me in the ass. It can't. My explosives weren't powerful enough to do anything but kill his backup helmets, and I lacked the dynamite reserves to throw a bunch of attempts at him. I continued on to Novak. They're among the easiest to please of all the factions. A measly 15 points will make one idolized. The large quest with the Uggos in the rocket factory are the big ticket item. Nobody in town cares about Boone's wife. Having Genie May shot doesn't do anything to your reputation. Solving a mystery for Dusty McBride can award the few other necessary points. He's a cattle rancher farming Brahmin, and sometimes, in the night, at around midnight, he hears one of his Brahmin cry out in pain as one of them are dragged away into the darkness. I sat in the pen to ambush the thief. Another Brahmin died in the skirmish as I surprised the nightkin. There's four points for what I did, a possible two more for redoing it and keeping all the cows alive. It. Four is enough. All Manny wants for 12 points is for the ghouls in Repcon to be cleared out. How I do that doesn't matter. I sent them to the great beyond, and it wasn't enough. 12 plus 4 is not 16. Where did I go wrong? It might have been Jason Bright. One rocket thruster and one set of pipes primed for landing later. I sent Mr. Bright and his boys towards the stars, became idolized by the town of vacancies, and headed to Red Rock Canyon to make love to the Great Cons. They're the first major faction we've encountered, requiring 30 points to fully please, but it's not too bad. Deliver a couple special packages to a guy in the Crimson Caravan and a gangster down in Vault 3, teach Jack all about how to optimize his drugs and refuse payment because knowledge is a disease best spread with love. And with that, they're already quite fond of me. For idolation, I'd have to convince Papa Khan, the King Khan, to take his ball and go home. This is their home, and he needs to leave. Talking Papa into killing his tribe takes some effort, mostly from reaching Melissa and showing her the light. Khans are strong believers in Caesar's Legion, but the Legion doesn't believe in women. Women are in the cons. You can see the disconnect. Getting Melissa to back me up when I spit in Papa Khan's face will go a long way towards keeping my face attached to my skull. She's out by Sloan, up the road a ways, around the bend, neck deep in hell. Back beyond the death claws is where she got herself trapped. She always said she wanted to be a crane. I just thought she had something different in mind. The Death Claws died, it's in their name. I let Melissa know what would happen to her if she didn't do exactly as I said, and I let Papa in on the truth. He wouldn't stand for deceit in his house. He turned off Carl right then and there, vowed to take the cons from the wasteland. I became their idol and went north to the Boomers. The Boomers are a joke. They require 50 fame to be idolized by. Sounds like a lot of work. Let's find out. Pearl is a Boomer. Be nice to her, offer to work for free, and she'll be nice back. It's just that easy. With high skills, a bunch of fame can be gained without leaving the camp or harming a soul. Listen in to the little boomer in training reciting his propaganda, amuse him with various facts about the history of his people, and you're at 8 points. The nearby medicine hut has 3 soldiers inside, 2 soldiers appear to be wounded, and a third soldier is wounded as well. Perform some red rock voodoo magic on a bunch of them for 21 more points. Then, you hand over all your scrap metal to Jack to blast into the land of idols. Some factions, including the boomers, have someone who will take donations and give items and usually fame in return. It's easy to abuse. I'll make a joke about this later. For now, I'm working with the Brotherhood of Steel. You think you know what's coming with them. You probably have a general idea, seeing as I can't blow up their bunker. Whatever you're conjuring up inside that head of yours is wrong. The only way to become idolized with the Brotherhood of Steel is to complete the last quest in Lonesome Road, including all the side nonsense like rescuing dead bodies and purging viruses from their database, you max out at liked. I could have jumped straight to Lonesome Road, gotten fame for the Brotherhood, and then came back to interact with the mole people as little as possible. 
I didn't do that because many quests in New Vegas are intertwined. Scribe Lorenzo sends you out on a mission to search the vaults of the Mojave for parts for their air compressor. This is where my predeterministic abilities come into play. I thought ahead. I did my due diligence and had a general plan. By going to Camp McCarran before entering Vault 22, I can kill two birds and seriously injure a third with one stone. Dr. Hildren at Camp McCarran wants info on Vault 22's plant infestation. One of the pieces the Brotherhood needs is down there, and Vault suits can be found down there. I've told you all about quests and helping people, but what I haven't told you about is how you can use donations and the act of charity to scam people out of their emotions. Sarah runs the Vault 21 gift shop on the Strip. You can donate Vault suits to her store, and in return, she'll give you fame for the Strip. Check your notes. The required fame for the Strip is 40. New Vegas has 5 vaults. Gather suits from each for easy fame, plus a few quests here and there, and we're well on our way towards literally having my name up in lights. That'll be a great day for all of us. After successfully saving Vault 22 and reporting back to Hildern, I let the Brotherhood simmer and did a large mission for the NCR. Return to Sender. Go to six different NCR ranger stations to upgrade their radios. Tell someone, then go back out to three more to check on animal attacks they've recently gone through. Why not use the new radios to ask? Why not ask when I was there at each camp initially? Because this is busy work, mostly. Obsidian only had 18 hours to make New Vegas. It's amazing they accomplished what they did. It turns out, those attacks on ranger stations were a load of fiction. Chief Hanlon had been falsifying reports for weeks to get supplies for his camp. Those supplies could have gone to a better place. That won't stand. I ran to tattle on him. In the time it took me to find another ranger, he locked the door and put a tunnel in between his ears. I promised his corpse that I'd look after his gun until the end of time. Gained some NCR fame for that suicide, funny how that worked itself out, and set off down the lonesome road. So, uh, spoilers kinda, nothing here matters. I'm level 45, I'm gonna skip almost everything from this DLC. See, I'm already at Ulysses Temple and max level. Being the max level with multiple perks maxed out, having NCR fame and Legion fame, let me pick the right set of options to force Ulysses to abandon his plan to nuke both factions. In trying to reach the temple, I started using the ammo exploit to create the wind button with red glare and tens of thousands of 9mm rockets. I sacrificed Eddie for fortune and fame just as I said I would, fled the divide, became idolized by the Brotherhood. My fame with the followers of the apocalypse went up as well. I repaired Helios 1, split the power between the Strip and Camp McCarran, and searched around Camp Light for something to do. In addition to the main objective of being idolized by as many factions as possible when the game ends, I'd also like to be idolized by everyone before I get the platinum chip, just to see if there would be any changes. What happens if you meet Caesar after you're idolized by the Legion? I say that now because Captain Astor at Searchlight wanted me to get revenge on the Legion for what they'd done to Searchlight by wiping out Cottonwood Cove. All of it. He's insane. I'll come back for Camp Searchlight later. For the time being, I handed over all my Radax, Radaway, and Fixer to Julie Farkas in the World of Mormons. The followers are another faction who you don't necessarily have to do any work for. It's 50 points to be their idol, and 39 of those points can be gained by donating drugs to Farkas. She needs 9 doses of each happy substances for 33 points, 6 more points comes from pushing more drugs onto her, she doesn't get to stop now. I, however, did stop when I ran out of drugs to give her. Enraged, I turned to the Legion for support. At Cottonwood Cove, I found the big wig and turned all my NCR dog tags into hooked on phonics for Legion fame. These fake Italians are the sole members of the Centurion Club. They're the only factions who need 100 fame to be idolized. Including murdering Caesar, there are like five things to do with the Legion. This is fine. No, it's not. I've danced around this topic for long enough. The pool doesn't look very deep, but I'm gonna dive in headfirst anyway. The Legion take NCR dog tags in exchange for fame. There are other factions like this, like I've already mentioned, and they include the Boomers, who accept scrap metal as you've already seen, the Powder Gangers have that Good Springs exploit for free fame, Freeside can be bought for a couple thousand caps, and donating Vault suits to Sarah gives fame for the Strip. The remaining factions have no easy way forward. It's nothing but the straight and narrow from here on out, starting with the bug sneaking into the tower every Tuesday night, and ending with the monorail exploding because I failed to stop the explosion. No harm done. Nobody's gonna be thinking about the train today. Later that afternoon, after the train died, I started taking out as many NCR soldiers as I could find. Sneak attacks negate any negative faction effects that come from outright murder. My sneak is at 100. I've got a silenced handgun and a stealth boy. See what I'm getting at? Everything I do in this game is trivial now. 
Out drinking a washed up caravan worker? Easy. It's the small things that trip me up now, like going to the gun runners and accidentally flying into orbit. I gained more NCR fame after stripping the money factory for its parts and more Legion fame by dropping off about two dozen more dog tags, taking me to liked by the Legion. I rambled around some more, using my god tier skills to kill just about every NCR trooper I found. I bought the medical supplies from the doctors in my way, stim packs to stuff in my bullet holes, and chems for the freeside doctor. My rampage against the NCR continued to make big waves in their population pool. After the strip attack and the monorail attack I let happen and Camp McCarran, I returned to Cass's home turf to kill one soldier for every whiskey she drank in her life. Then I took her with me to show the almost legate what I did. I'd become idolized by the Legion, taking my idol count up to the Boomers, Brotherhood of Steel, Caesar's Legion, Freeside, Great Cons, Novak, Powder Gangers. We're getting close now. The strip's close. She's teetering on the edge. She just needs a little push to send those heels to the ceiling. I'm not the man for this. I just took pictures out in the pasture where the last woman to truly get me lost her life. The pictures were for the town agrophobe, Michael Angelo. He's trying to bring style and grace back to the strip. It's not much in the way of points, but it's honest work and it helps out a loser. Speaking of losers, I searched Sarah's vault for more suits to donate. None were found down there, which was great for me. I did plan B first. I came into the store with 19 vault suits. To ensure I got the most points possible, it can be finicky with these mass donations, I dropped the suits on the floor and handed them to her one at a time. The suits were not enough. But there is another faction I haven't met yet, and oddly enough, they require the fewest points of any factions. They are the White Glove Society. Gloves because of the digits on your hand. 10 points for the White Gloves and you are idolized. How this is accomplished is entirely up to the player. You will do the Beyond the Beef quest and you will like it. Outside of opening fire on them or other petty crimes, doing that quest is the only way to change your reputation with the White Glove Society. Kinda shit, kinda not. Beyond the Beef is beyond annoying to complete. It doesn't come with a full serving of humor. You can't see the dislike button anymore. I'm free to use a higher level of humor than you're used to. Completing Beyond the Beef is one thing, but finishing it with the outcome of maximum White Glove fame and strip fame in mind makes it far more convoluted. To write the history book for this story, I sweet-talked Morty to get access to the basement, where I used vats to scan the sauna for naked NCR troops I could assassinate for their dog tags. Since the beginning, I haven't had the sneak indicator on screen. Not by choice, I just didn't feel like disabling individual mods to see which was causing it because I could and did work around it. That problem, like all festering problems you ignore, extended to pretty much anything involving the E key late in the game. So like you walk up to an NPC and their name to talk to them doesn't show up. Immersive, neat, just not a great feature for this run. Down in the basement, I used my knowledge of the human noodle to talk the chef into taking a mental health break. While he was off weeping, I used my wasteland survival skills to fake a meal that tasted like human flesh, let the head chef take it away, and waited in the shadows for Mortimer to go on an exuberant rant to all of his fellow gloves about a return to form. They're eating Ted Gunderson, son of Heck Gunderson. Who the heck is Heck Gunderson, you're right to be asking? He's the meat supplier of the largest meat supplier in the Mojave. Therein lies the trick. Keeping the white gloves happy, getting Ted out alive, and convincing Heck to continue supplying to meat to the casinos and the strip. As Mortimer brags to everyone about consuming what tastes like Ted Gunderson, I bring out the real Ted, reveal the real truth. The audience gasps as Mortimer flees. I didn't so much as go after him as much as I did follow him towards the entrance where Ted's father is. Now idolized by the white gloves, the only remaining factions are the strip and NCR, both of whom like me. I had a few vault suits to give to Sarah for some last minute fame, and out of stubbornness, I turned to Cottonwood Cove to boost my NCR fame. I pulled out greased lightning, crouched down, and force fed a couple knuckle sandwiches to the Legion without anyone hearing it. I relied on quick saves and luck to sneak attack them all. No way to know if they'll detect me until I attack. I managed to wipe them all out without raising the alarm, including the guy I sold my NCR souls to for fame. It did not matter. For the slaughter of Cottonwood Cove, I became idolized by the New California Republic, and with four points for the strip guaranteed by meeting Mr. House and leaving the Lucky 38, I saw no reason to not take the easy way out and confront the big man in the tower. I hadn't the chip yet, all there was to do there was increase my payment. I didn't have the chip, no fame, what a shame. I went back on my primary objective and ran for the tops, met Yes Man, Swank gave me my guns back and I approached Benny. His guards knew their place and didn't say a word. Benny, of course, ran his mouth. I went up to his special place and blew him apart with the most powerful gun I had to my name. 
With the platinum chip in my possession, all my transgressions against the Legion had been forgiven. They love me. There's nothing for them to forgive. I went to the fort and introduced myself to Caesar. His reaction wasn't what I was expecting. Apparently, I'd been a pain in his ass since I regained consciousness. Despite the conflicting information, most of the experts agree that most of the evidence points towards him being wrong. Upgrading the robots in the underground bunker pleased Caesar. The big idiot thought the rumble was destruction. It was the opposite. Sounds of construction as I upgraded the Securitron army for Mr. House. Caesar gave me his trip back, House showed me his entire hand, I didn't believe him, so I took a look for myself. Blowing him up with dynamite only gives negative karma, there's no reputation loss for his demise. Now that he's out of the way, the NCR started making their moves. They wiped out my negative record, just as Caesar did, and I took very careful steps towards the end of the game. I've met all the factions, done quests for them all, and become about as loved as I can. From here on out, it's all about maintaining a balance between all factions. I'm about as coordinated as a drunk swan on a teeter-totter. My balancing act may be unorthodox to some. I didn't want to take the yes-man way out. I chose the NCR as my playthings. Things that go boom is my quest. It's a pun. It's the sound their hips make when they fall down the stairs. I've already done their job. Kings are next. My reputation with Freeside supersedes it, but it doesn't afford me any special treatment. Not fair. I paid good money for that reputation. In retaliation, I spiked Pacer's pillow with Psyker for Ambassador Crocker. For the Republic Part 2 took me to Hoover Dam to see Cass's mother. Her job for me was erasing the Great Cons. Been there, done that, Caesar just now caught wind of what I'd done to his puppets. Turning in that quest knocked my Legion reputation down from idolized to good-natured rascal. Siding with the NCR isn't an option. My choices have narrowed. I'd been friendly with the Fiends in Vault 3 up until now. Theirs is the last vault I haven't pillaged for vault suits. Anders was there too, was being the biggest word in that sentence, thematically. Anders tripped down the stairs and died. I didn't find any more vault suits. No way around it now. I sided with Yes Man. House is MIA. I familiarized myself with all the players on the side of the field. That quest is complete. Bet you didn't know Caesar has ears everywhere. Working against him gave me a few negative reputation points, lowering my status with them once again to good-natured rascal. In another life, I tried to side with Mr. House. Upon getting my orders to investigate Gamora for any funny business, my reputation with the Legion dropped. Let me run you through the end game real quick. There's meeting the factions, I did that, President Kimball's address, the El Dorado substation, and Hoover Dam. You can't get through the meeting the factions portion of New Vegas without receiving some infamy with some group, probably the Legion. Back in real life, I kept on siding with Yes Man, ate the Legion infamy like a good little boy, and headed into Gamora looking for a laugh. Gacino, after being swayed by my persuasion tactics of breaking into his room, reading his diary and blackmailing him with it, told me about his boss's plans to fuck up the strip when war breaks out. I blew up their guns and tricked the bosses into opening fire with each other becoming idolized by the strip in the process. Next, I went back to Hoover Dam and did a quick sweep of the area to prepare for President Kimball's arrival. The son of a senator stubbed his toe, the president's coming to give him a medal. I almost caught the repairman running away from the bird the big cheese rode in on. What I could do that I usually couldn't is de-rig the explosive device to prevent it from exploding, which would happen not too long after the Legion sniper tried to take him out from the tower and the maniac rushed him with a knife. The president was safe and sound. I didn't get any fame, but I didn't lose any either. The finishing touches here, El Dorado substation. What a nightmare. NCR soldiers stationed there, maybe five of them, guarding that outpost like God himself commanded them to, but I didn't remember giving them any orders. I sneak attacked one, ran around the back for another, missed, waited until night, and the trouble began. They're inside the station, and going inside antagonizes them. You want to do a hated by everyone run, come here for the NCR. Stand inside and you'll be vilified in under 30 seconds. The trouble was them being inside. They would not come out no matter what I tried. I waited for them there. I used the wait feature to pass the days. I waited at Hidden Bunker, I waited at Good Springs, and there I remembered the stealth boy in the safe sunny smile told me about after I was born. I took my clothes off popped the stealth boy, snuck through the station as quickly as I could, and left before they knew what hit them and what hit my reputation. It wasn't what I expected. Caesar's Legion thinks I'm a wild child, and the NCR idolizes me. Good news? I didn't trespass long enough to change my reputation status with the NCR. Bad news? The Legion. That happened after winning a side bet with Yes Man. We're at the end now. The second battle of Hoover Dam. Let's see where we stand. Boomers. Brotherhood of Steel. Followers of the Apocalypse. Freeside. Great Cons. 
NCR, Novak, Powder Gangers, The Strip, and The White Glove Society all idolize me. Good Springs sees me for who I really am, and The Legion sees me as a wild child. I'm an extremist. Wild Child comes from both 100 fame and 100 infamy. The best of both worlds, really. I didn't check, but I'm almost positive that doing anything other than siding with The Legion will get you 100 infamy with The Legion. After all that work to get here, it's surprisingly easy in the home stretch. Although I did have to go back and ditch Cass. She opened fire on the Legion, and I wasn't looking for any more negativity than I already had. They attacked me. That didn't change. This was for me. I ran past the heavy troopers, installed Yes Man, exploded the generators, and made it back up top where the boomers rained down pretend bombs from above. You already know I talked my way out of the Legate fight. I changed things up by using barter instead of speech. Oliver arrived. I talked him down too, and did not beat Fallout New Vegas while being idolized by everyone. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Thanks to the Champion Tier supporters as well as other channel members for making videos like this one possible. Join the Mitten Squad Discord by going to mitten.land. Follow me on Twitter, at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.